The question is, if the uncertainty in the velocity of a particle is equal to its velocity, what is the order of uncertainty in its location? So, this is related to uncertainty. So, we have to know the uncertainty relation. What is uncertainty principle? That is, delta x delta p greater than or equal to h cross by 2. Here we know what is this h cross? h cross is nothing but h by 2 pi. Okay. So, this is the exact definition of uncertainty principle. Right. But here, in the question, they are asked to find what is the order of uncertainty. That is, we can approximate this relation that is delta x delta p is approximately equal to h. Because we need to find out only the order of uncertainty. Okay, not the exact value, just order of uncertainty. And here, we can expand this delta p. That is, we know, what is p? p is nothing but momentum. That is, mass into velocity. So, what is delta p? That will be equal to m into delta b. So, we can rewrite this expression as delta x m delta v is approximately equal to h. Now, read the question once again. In the question, it is told that velocity, the uncertainty in the velocity of the particle is equal to its velocity. Okay, that is uncertainty in velocity. Delta v is equal to its velocity. So, we can rewrite this delta v is equal to v. So, we get the relation as delta x m v approximately equal to h. Now, the question is to find out what is the uncertainty in its location. That is, delta x is the uncertainty in its location. That is, we can rewrite this equation as delta x is approximately equal to h by mv. Here we know what is mv. mv is nothing but p. That is, this is equal to h by p. Here, I think you are remembering the de Broglie's theorem. What is de Broglie's theorem? If there is a particle and it is moving with certain velocity v, then what will happen? There will be an associated wave function for this particle. And the wavelength of this particle is given by lambda is equal to h by p. This is the de Broglie relation. So, h by p can be written as lambda. See, that is, this is equal to lambda. So, what we got? We got delta x is equal to lambda. There is uncertainty in position is equal to lambda. Actually, there is a tricky way to solve this problem. Sometimes you are not remembering the uncertainty relation, even though you can solve this problem by a simple trick, a plus two level trick, that is dimensional analysis. How we can use the dimensional analysis here? See, the question is to find out the uncertainty in location. That is delta x. Okay. So, what is the dimension of delta x? The dimension of delta x is length only. Right. So, we have to check the options. So, first option is p. We have to check the dimension of first option. That is dimension of p. Is the dimension of p's length? No. Right. So, this is not the right answer. Now, check the second option. That is lambda. What is the dimension of lambda? Lambda is wave length. Right. Length. Okay. So, dimension of lambda is length. So, this is the correct answer. And you can check the others, others also. That is option C. P by M. That is P is equal to MV. MV by M. That is V. So, what is the dimension of V? It is not length. Okay. And option D also don't have the dimension of length. So, the correct answer is option B. Okay. Here, the operators A and B commute with the H. That means, if you take commutator of A with H, 
that will be equal to 0 and if we take combinator of B with H that will be equal to 0. That is they will commute with the H and uh, one more condition is given that is commutator AB is equal to C and where C is another operator and the question is to find out what is commutator HC. So this is what we have to evaluate. So here we know C is nothing but commutator AB, right? So we can rewrite this commutator as H comma. We can replace C by commutator AB. Okay. Now we can expand this commutator. That is, we know H where AB is nothing but commutator AB is nothing but AB minus B A. Okay. So that is AB minus B A. Now we can expand this commutator that is H I am taking first term that is comma AP. I am taking this minus outside that is minus H comma BA. Now again we can expand this commutator that is H comma A B plus commutator H comma B where and A minus commutator H comma B A minus B commutator H comma A where these two conditions are given that is commutator A H and B H is equal to 0. So this is nothing but 0, this is also 0, this is 0 and this one is also 0. That means commutator H C is equal to 0. The next question is, if the quantum mechanical operator of two observables of a system do not commute, then the observables are said to be incompatible, the observables are said to be compatible and so on. So what is the solution of this problem? If they do not commute, that means the observables are said to be incompatible. The answer is A. I tell you a little bit explanation. We know two quantum mechanical operators of two observables. Two observables in the sense one is position and another one is momentum. Okay, so the quantum mechanical operator of these observables are X cap and P cap. And uh, we know the commutator relation that is xp. And we know the commutator xp is nothing but i h cross. That means x cap p cap minus p cap x cap is equal to i h cross. See if p is the operator acting on a state first then x cap is operating and uh, if x cap is operating first then p is operating next. So these two operations are different. That is why there is an i h cross. So this is incompatible. Okay. And what is a compatible observable if a commander of two operators is equal to 0 then we can say they are compatible. I tell you an example for a compatible observable that is L square and L is it. If we take commutator of L square L set we get 0. But if we take Commutator of x, p, x, we get i, h cross. Okay. So if operators do not commute like this one, then those observables are said to be incompatible. Okay. We discussed all the necessary theory to solve this kind of problem in our classes. And you can buy our classes by visiting this website www.designsia.com. Okay, you can visit our website and you can 
join in our classes at any time okay so in our classes we will discuss lots of problem like this one and we will clearly explain the theory behind each of this concept and it will enable you to solve this kind of problems in competitive exams like net gate set pcd entrances scientific questions exams and all okay so please visit our website and let us continue our discussion on previous year scientific assistant question paper okay so this is a question related to hydrogen atom you know for a hydrogen atom there is a nucleus and around the nucleus there is shells and in this shells electrons are revolving around the nucleus right so here the question is to find out how much energy is required to remove an electron from n equal to eighth state of hydrogen atom so this is n equal to 1 and this is n equal to 2 and uh, this one is n equal to 3 and so on so the question is to find out an electron which is at n equal to eighth state okay so we have to remove this electron from the hydrogen atom so how much energy we have to supply that is the question okay so first we have to find out what is the energy of electron that possesses when it is in a state n equal to h that is we know energy en of electron in the hydrogen atom is equal to minus 13.6 eb by n square and here this n value is 8 therefore this is equal to minus 13.6 eb by 8 square that is minus 13.6 eb by 8 square is 64 and this is approximately equal to minus 0 0.25 eb so if you solve exactly you will get this value is equal to minus 0.21 eb so this is the energy possessed by the electron when it is at n equal to h so here we have to remove this electron which is binded to the hydrogen atom so what we have to do we have to provide a certain amount of energy that is along with this minus 0.21 eb we have to provide an additional 0.21 eb then the energy of binding energy of electron to the hydrogen atom will be equal to zero so we can remove the electron from the hydrogen atom so we have to provide an energy of 0.21 eb to the electron to remove it from the n equal to 8 state of hydrogen atom so this is the answer The ground state of linear harmonic oscillator is. I think you are familiar with the ground state linear harmonic oscillator wave function that is psi zero of x equal to alpha by root pi all raised to half raised to minus half alpha square x square. That is here this one is a some constant a and this one is also some constant I'm calling a small a. So we can rewrite this psi zero of x as a constant into e raised to minus a x square. So we can easily plot this function and if we plot this function then we get a graph look like this one which is nothing but a Gaussian profile. Okay so the answer is option B. Which of the following is wrong? So this is a problem related to commutator operator and uh, I think you know the basics of commutator operator. So I think you know this relation this is correct one that is commutator of L square LZ is 0 and uh, that is a I think you know this result. Now 
we have to check the other options b c and d here you can see l plus l minus and all these are the ladder operator and where l plus is equal to lx plus i ly and l minus is equal to lx minus i ly i think you know the basics all the basics of combinator operator and the ladder operator and all right so i am directly going to solve the problem i am going to check option b that is combinator l set l plus so we have to check whether this is equal to h cross l plus or not okay so that is equal to combinator l is set where l plus is this one that is lx plus i l y so we can expand this combinator that is l is set l x plus l is set comma i l y that is equal to a combinator of l set l x that is in the order therefore we get i h cross l y plus here there is i time so i am taking this i time outside so combinator of l set l y here this is disorder okay that is first z will come then y will come okay therefore we get a minus i h cross l x that is i h cross into l y minus i l x if you are taking this i inside then we will get this is equal to h cross into i l y i into minus i that is plus 1 that is l x that is equal to we got h cross into l x plus i l y where l x plus i l y is nothing but l plus that is we got h cross l plus so this option is correct now we have to check option d whether it is correct or wrong that is l minus l is set okay so we have to substitute for l minus that is lx minus i ly comma l is set so we can expand this one that is we get combinator lx l is set minus i combinator ly l is set so this is equal to combinator of lx l set is minus i h cross l y minus i into i h cross l x that is equal to we can take this minus i h cross outside so we will get l y plus i l x or if we are taking this i inside then we will get h cross into l x minus i l y that is this is equal to h cross l minus okay so this is the answer but here it is given minus h cross l so this is the wrong option okay